We're going to start from scratch. I haven't done anything yet, uh, and we'll just put this together as we go along. And what I'm going to do today is a shaped bag topper, like a treat bag topper or whatever you want to use it for, and possibly a paper ruffle. I was thinking uh, a while back that it'd probably be something easy to design on something like a Cricut or a you know electronic die cutting machine. And if you have a sample in front of you, you kind of have a feeling of where the score line should go so that you can just cut it and score or score and cut the way this machine works. And then you have always, you know, ready to go, some uh, cutting file. Um, I'm not sure that I've ever seen a cutting die for a paper ruffle, but they're probably out there. Either way, if um, there's anything I'll be using here or obviously like Cricut stuff, <laughs> um, I'll link them in the description box and those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. And I know I've heard from you a lot of you guys like, oh, it makes, you know, I'm really wanting or making you guys want to get a Cricut. And I'm always like, uh, not that I don't recommend it. I just don't really like the way the company handles certain things or the updates they do or like they'll just ditch a project or a, a machine, not offer support anymore. But they're trying, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let's just try this out. So I'm going to say new project because I have not tried this and have no idea. What we're getting off sort of into, I did try yesterday or a couple days ago, whenever it was, to make a shaped topper with words. So I learned a little bit from that. So that let's do that one first. So um, if you want to make a bag topper with like words, right? So we're gonna go to text, and you can just grab a phrase too. If there's a phrase you like that's ready to go, definitely grab it, and that'll work. It always defaults to Cricut Sans, and I do want to cut it. I'm not trying to write, so this is fine. But I don't want Cricut Sans. I'm gonna pick something else. So let's click on the little arrow and it does say current fonts. Um, if I say filters and say I just want to see the ones I own, I literally have like five things, <laughs> so maybe six, right? But if I unclick current, now I have tons of things and uh, yeah, it's still on the ones that I own. So kind of interesting. Um, let's use a font that'll be easy to do this with. Uh, this one's kind of boring, but let's just say that one. Let's see what it looks like. That might be good. Uh, I chose another one the other day that literally the letters were like the same size, so that was nice. But let's say we we're going to say, yippee, that is very, um, stylized, isn't it? Okay. And you should be able to see the letter spacing right here. This is what I wanted to see yesterday. I couldn't find that. So letter spacing, let's say we want them closer together. So we're just going to make, I'm just pressing down, down, down. Um, that is literally called kerning. Kerning is the space between letters, but I'm going to get them a little bit closer because, you know, they just look really stretched out. Okay. So I have my word. And now what we're going to do to make it into a bag topper that has like words and shape and everything is we are going to offset right up here and that's a huge offset um, I want it a little tighter and th what's a bummer is that you can kind of see behind here but not really <laughs> I guess it depends on where this is placed so I'm just going to reduce it by grabbing it like that and that way that it's a little more I don't know I just like it to have a little more space to um, to see the shape of the letters better, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you have to have a, a good amount because you're going to weld this together in a double way. So let's just say apply. And again, this one's not the best because of the different height and stuff of the letters. You can play with that too. And I didn't this time, but let's just take this over here. And that's my word. And so easy enough, we're going to duplicate it. We're going to just flip this one or whichever one, but I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to bring it close to this one and it depends, you know, how toppery do you want this? Do you want it to just hold on there and just be real loose on these ends? Or do you want it to really join up more? That's the part about this specific word that's a little bit more difficult, which I did yesterday. I was like, ah, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, we can get it so close that these things touch too, but then you're losing a lot of this. Let me show you if I brought this over. It's not the worst, but you are going to fold it somewhere there. So kind of a bummer. Um, We'll just go for it. I keep picking the worst examples for this. I don't know why. Okay, so now we have that one and this one. I'm going to do is highlight both of them, and I'm going to align them at least knowing that they're aligned uh, horizontally. See, so just a little bit. I had to move it over. Okay, and then now that we're already highlighted, we can also come down here under Combine, 
and weld it. So now it's one piece. And I'm actually going to change the color of this if I can so we can see it a little better. Um, let's do a light blue. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to need for a bag topper, I uh, will do a shaped one too, like an image, but um, you need a shape, and the shape is a score line. So let's go ahead and rotate this score line so it works for us right now. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you can just bring it over here and then pull it as long as you need it to be. Or you can actually take measurements. I just kind of eyeball this. And that's about that. I can see it probably needs to move over a little bit this way. I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move it over, over, over. And if it looks good to me, I'm like, see how it's right at the edge, right there. If you want to make sure, I suppose you can highlight the things. And let me see if... A, a lighting centered might help. Yeah, see, it did help keep it nice and centered, but it did pull my score line to where I don't want it. So I'm just going to move it back with my arrow keys. So now I know it's perfectly centered up and down, but I do need to move it back over. Okay, and now I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to attach. And you see, I put that score line all the way across. I'm not doing a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here, but you can do that if you want. So now we have this bag topper piece that says yippee and we're going to cut these just so you have an example of what that looks like so you see that and then when you fold it over the eye is going to be sticking up on top that's kind of what i was hmm. oh maybe we can replace that with a, a little rhinestone or something else that's not sticking up okay so that's one thing we can do now let's do a shaped image so bag topper. we are nearing christmas time so maybe a shaped bag topper that we would like to use should be something christmasy i don't know i thinking everything's kind of round you know Oh, you know, I have some border ones. Let me see if I have, I'll just say border and see if I can find something cute. And then I'm going to say ownership that I've purchased because I only like to see the things I have. Like, that's cute. Oh, look at this one. Oh my gosh. So many cute borders. <laughs> We're looking for something Christmassy. So little gifts. That's cute. I did this one not too long ago. Actually, that's... <gasps> Oh, let's do this one. I mean, we can do something more Christmassy than that, but I like these because they're nice and straight, and I think this might be an easy one to work with, so let's add to canvas. Oh, I said I was going to cut them out, didn't I? Ooh, this one has a lot of going on. <laughs> oh, this is actually a perfect one, though, because there's so many different things going on with this one that we're going to take care of to manipulate. So, okay, so let's get that. Um, let's make it the size we want, you know. Uh, the other one I wasn't really paying attention. Let's say your little bag is or your package top is four inches tall. So this is a little smaller than that four inches, okay? And I'm gonna duplicate this because actually what I'm gonna do is double click and I want this layer. And you don't even have to double click. Actually, I can go over here and just say this is the layer I want. So highlight the layer you want, separate it out. And what we're gonna do with this layer is we're gonna make an offset and we're gonna work with it that way. So again, offset, that's a really big offset so you can either drag it or change the numbers yourself apply now this can go back well actually not that this is still grouped see how they're still together so yeah, i can place it back here just to make it look cute but it doesn't matter they're still in one group and now we're going to manipulate this so i'm going to take that and i'm going to duplicate same thing we did before bring it down here we're going to flip it and we're just going to bring it together yeah, just a little bit like that. that. That's a really cute one. Okay, so I'm going to highlight both of them just like we did before. I'm going to align them horizontally. And as far as up and down, it's what I feel like doing. If I want them to touch more, I will bring them down more. So that part, I don't really need to align. I just want to make sure they're pretty much left and right aligned. And right now that it's highlighted, I also want to... Let's go ahead and change the color just so we can see it better. Uh, find like this purple color and you see right now they're just kind of on top of each other like this and I'll highlight both of them again because I let it go we're going to click combine and we are going to weld now if you click slice slice literally means cutting it so it would just cut across here and we didn't want that we want weld so there we go again we need a shape which is the um, scoring line we're going to rotate it up here at the top up here, up here, 90 degrees. We're going to take it over here. And again, I'm just going to pull it as much as I think. Let's see. That's not too bad. But I can tell it's um, up high a little bit. So let's highlight that. 
and we're going to go to a line again and again I'm going to center it. I'm sure there's a different way to do this better. Um, oh yeah, yeah, center. Uh, hmm. Let's say center vertically. Okay, perfect. And it's already highlighted so I'm just going to attach it down here so that those stay together. And now we have another little cute guy. We can bring this to front. Um, a shaped bag topper that has little gifts. Okay guys, so it doesn't look very Christmassy because of the colors I've chosen. What happens is when I go to cut, I just really then select the paper, you know, colors that I want when I put them down. But if you want, you know, we can change all these things. Let's say, I don't know. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I can change the color now. Yeah, you know why? Because I already put the score line. So it won't really let me manipulate that. But let's say we have this thing and you want it to make it look more Christmassy just so you know what you're doing. So present border, the little tag. We're going to make it green. And there's another one that's supposed to be the same. So this one, green. Also the same green. Okay, so those are the same. This one's like a yellow color. And again, I just highlight it there. You can also just grab it here as long as you've touched it. Uh, let's make that one red. And I guess this one should be red. And then maybe this last one white or gold or something. I don't know. Um, I guess we can just do white. Just and so it's like a color of an Italian flag or something. <laughs> and then let's say the base present border um, is going to be like a gold color. I don't know. I'll just use that. Ugh, that's ugly. Hold on. <laughs> um, mm, dark green. Yeah, sure. Let's just we're just trying to make it more Christmassy. And then that background one, I would have. Actually, maybe I can still grab it. Can I grab it from here? Uh, maybe. Yeah, oh, there we go. Good. So I grabbed it from here, weld result. And let's make it... Oh, now I don't really know what color to make it. Um, dark red? Sure. Okay, so that looks more Christmassy. Okay, there we go. But again, I just when I go to cut, I just put the paper I want at that point. I don't really care about manipulating colors here. It's never been my thing. Okay. Next thing we want to do is a paper ruffle. Oh, this is going to be interesting. So normally my paper ruffles are like an inch and a half or an inch wide. Let's say inch and a half. And let me see if there's any shapes that we can use. You can definitely use just like a, a square and make it into a rectangle. So that's free. Actually, let me show you how to do that if you just want to make a free one. So we have this. We're going to unhook this up here. We want it one and a half wide. Oh, this thing does everything crooked. Okay, or wrong. Let's just say 12. Ooh, we can't really do 12 inches though because your paper is usually that wide. So let's say 11 inches. It's not going to hurt anything. By one point. It's going to be a little shorter than normal unless you have longer paper, right? And also the machine likes to be like, oh, that's too big. We can't cut it, which is really annoying. So 11 by one and a half. Um, is how we want it. And it has basic edges. Now I like dovetailing my edges here. So what we're going to do, well, this is going to take a while, is we're going to grab a triangle. And I'm going to rotate this triangle um, 90 degrees. And if I bring this here, actually let's change the color of it. Yeah, it's too big. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to manipulate this thing until it's small enough to go here. Now if I slice that, that's a really really deep um, piece. So what I'm going to do is up here I'm going to undo it. So my lock is let go. And I want to, sometimes you can manipulate these things. There we go. So let's put that back. What I was doing was kind of shortening it up. That's actually pretty good. Let's see. trying to place it to see about how deep that is. That's not bad. I do need it to be a little bit more this way. Right? If you're looking at it, what I'm trying to see is if it's cutting right at the end. Oh, that's perfect. That's not too bad. It is pretty deep though still. So let's say that's a good sizing. I just want this shorter. Ugh, come on thing. Just a little shorter. I'm not trying to finish change the end piece, the back side there. But it did move a little bit on me, so let's pull that out a little bit. And let's see where that's at. Pine see pull just a little bit more. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do before I do anything else, I'm going to duplicate this piece because I like the way it looks. So duplicate, I'm going to rotate it. Actually, I'm going to flip it here in the flip. I'm going to flip it horizontally. This will all make sense in a minute. I'm trying to show you how you can do this for free without having um, another piece. So what I'm going to do is highlight this and I'm going to align to the very right. So align right there. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight that and we are going to slice. So now this piece just got cut into there and look at that you just made a dovetail. So on this side again I'm going to bring it here, I'm going to bring it to the front. You guys were halfway there. <laughs> so I'm going to highlight this and align left. And now Yep. Now I suppose if you want to you can also align it up and down horizontally just making sure you put it right where you want it but that's all I wanted. I'm going to slice it and we just made a banner that's free. Now I'm sure, oop, what did I do? I don't care about that. Um, you probably have a banner die cut in your repertoire but you know I'm just showing you how to make it for free. Okay let's change the color of this thing. Um, I don't know, yellow, sure. Now all we're going to do is a series of, um, what are these things called, um, score lines. And so I'm going to kind of shorten this score line and I'm just going to tilt it, which is a real bummer is that we have to play with that over here. Let me see what 350 looks like. That's okay. It's not the sharpest or deepest line, but okay, we have that. And then I'm going to duplicate it because I need another one that's very similar. And as you see, I have it going off the edge for now. I don't really care. We'll fix that in a little bit. And maybe do a little more with this one. Something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate that. And this time, when you're doing a ruffle, you kind of go this way and you kind of fold it that way. You kind of fold it this way and you kind of fold it that way. So that's what I'm trying to replicate right now. And so this one, what I want to do is, um, I'm just going to flip it. <laughs> How about that? That's so good. Okay, and then they all need like a pair, so I need to duplicate that. Generally when you're doing your little lines, some go this way and some tuck more that way. And I mean those are perfectly the same. I kind of mess with it just to play with it just to see if that makes a difference. I don't know if it will. Okay, so now I want to duplicate more of these guys. So I'm going to take a minute and literally all I'm doing is putting two score lines at a time. One going this way, one going that way, every other chance, you know. Um, these are going to kind of mix in shape. A lot of times I do like keeping them the same, so I might have to... Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so something like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. So that's all I'm doing, just duplicating lines, putting some here and some there. Some a little wackier than others. Maybe more like, I don't really want it straight. I want it more like that. And then again, duplicating this one. So as much as I can fit in here, I might manipulate them a little bit more. Oopsie. Differently. Like that one's a little skinnier. Okay, and then just add another one. <laughs> so I'm going to go down the line of just adding pairs of score lines and we'll see how it works. This is what I put here and you know I just uh, I left the things hanging out I don't care you know if you want to bring it in and shorten it up I guess we can take a minute to do that. Um, I didn't just say one and a half because this is a different kind of angle you know so it's probably different than one and a half like it's 1.64 as you can see there or whatever so the when you're designing this and the reason I'm doing this is because after making paper ruffles for a while I know when I would do my ruffles like I tuck for it to go back you have to bend it right because it's bending it forward in front of you and then bend it back so that's why you need these two but you're also taking up that space so when I bend this forward and then back this whole piece ends up over here <laughs> I hope that makes sense like this edge of this ends up over here so, Excuse you're, kinda, me. so you're kind of um, keeping that in mind right so and this is the first time I've done this so I'm gonna try it out if it works great if it looks weird I will not be super happy. Um, the other thing that's kind of funny is I wonder if I can make a grouping of the score lines and have them as a duplicate. So let me arrange these a little bit smaller. Like I said, I don't really care that they go off the edge. Um, that just means my scoring tool is going to go off the edge there. 
when it does it. So let me short shorten these guys, and I'll be back. Take this, and I'm gonna move it away for a second, <laughs> just so I can grab the score lines. And I'm gonna try to group these. Uh, let's see, group, perfect. And I'm gonna duplicate it and move that away. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna duplicate and move it away because I don't need that for right now. And this guy, I'm gonna bring back up to where I think I want him to be. Was that about where we were? We were a little more this way. I'm also trying to keep this level like the same, like the distance here, distance here, just so that our little ruffle will be about the same. So to make our ruffle, I'm going to highlight these things together and I'm going to attach them. So now we have this paper ruffle. The reason I copied that set is so I don't have to do it again. So now I'm going to go and look for an image of a uh, border is actually kind of a good one. What I'm looking for is like, um, like a strip. Oh my gosh. I'm looking for like a scallop border. Maybe if I put scallop, I don't know if it'll. Okay. <laughs> That's still giving me the same result. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, doily. So that's why you have to kind of like, you know, look for a doily. And doily hmm. oh that's cute but that's not what we're doing one like this maybe but i have to stretch it in a way that's not going to look nice anymore so i'm going to keep looking until i find like a border <coughs> okay guys um i ended up looking for border strip and of course tons of them are like anna griffin designs and it's kind of what i'm looking for but i really want it to be something like the background piece of this one i guess so i'm going to take that I'm going to click on that one, add to canvas, and then we're going to get rid of some of this stuff. It's so tiny right now. Um, okay, so let's check this guy out. That is so cute, that little border. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, we're going to ungroup it, and I want to get rid of this topper piece. That piece is gone. <laughs> and I think I'll use this piece because it's a little more pronounced, the scallops on it. So let's get rid of that background one. We'll use this one. A little skinnier than I would like, but let me see if we can undo the um, aspect ratio here. And again, let's do 11.25, a little bit longer, see if we can get that. And how thick it is it? 1.2? You know what? That's okay, because if I change this, let's say 1.4, that's not too bad. Sometimes it'll look funky, so um, that's, that's okay. So we'll leave it at that. And now we'll bring back this set of score lines. I'm going to bring it to front. And that's why I copied it, because to be honest, I didn't want to do this all over again. <laughs> I am that lazy. Um, and that's it. So now if I want, and I just placed it like in the center, you know. Um, if I wanted to do the dovetailing, I can definitely do that again. But I think for this one, oh gosh, you know what? I kind of did like that dovetail. Okay. Um, we kind of have to do it before, because if you highlight things, Let's say I highlight this. It's going to highlight everything and it has the score lines. It's going to tell you the weld is weird, the slice is weird, and all that kind of stuff. So I can just move this away for now. And I'll go ahead and dovetail it just because I do like the way that looks. So I'm going to mess around just like I did at the beginning. I'm going to get two triangles, undo the aspect ratio, and mess around with it until I'm happy with them. Weld it in, or slice it in. Do the same thing over here and slice it in. Just okay? as before. Be so now I'm just going to drag this up, bring it to front again, so I want to see it. Um, bring to front and just pop it in there again you can shorten the things if you want I suppose I wonder if you can actually shorten it this way Ooh, see that messes with it a little bit um, I think if I release this at the top see the aspect ratio I could just grab this and make it a little bit shorter there you go and then bring this down but it's not that important, to be honest. Okay. Again, I'm just kind of centering it left to right. And then we'll see. Hopefully those score lines will work for us, right? So now I'm going to highlight these two and attach those so the score lines are attached. And then we can try out and see about our paper ruffle. I don't know. Um, I'm probably going to cut everything. I don't know if I'm going to cut this one because, honestly, it has a lot of parts. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to do this one again. I just did this the other day when I did my um, loaded pocket. And it was kind of a lot of work but we'll see maybe we'll cut 
Well, we'll have to cut it, won't we? Okay. <laughs> Let me go to my work surface. And again, when you go to make it, you are going to click on, you know, well, for me, for any material. I bought this pre-folded card thing, and it was expensive, and I have no idea how to work it. The cards are a nightmare. Anyway, so if you're going to do more than one, because, you know, you're going to do whatever, you can apply, you know, three of them or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to do one today, so let's go back to apply. And again, it's showing me the gray paper. Of course, I'll pick a cute color. The next thing is the tag and the topper for that one piece, the, you know, uh, the whole topper background, the next little area, and uh, this one. Of course, we can make them all the same color, too. That's the other thing. I guess maybe that's what I'll do. That way it'll be quicker for the other one. Um, our border. When you get here, it's going to tell you you need, it's going to score and basic cut, right? As you can see there, or this top one. So they're going to want you to put the scoring tool in. And this only works on the larger machines. The Cricut Joy does not have a scoring option yet. I don't know why. I, they can develop that, I think, pretty easily, but whatever. That's the background for the board, the GIFs, and then that's the topper background. What I'm going to do is go back and just make everything one color of these guys. That way, like I said, I just cut them out pretty easily um, as far as like the tags and the topper bits. But uh, I'll be back. This, so that works out easier for me. I do want to mention something. Like right now, if I had this and I wanted to change the sizing of this, if I move this, this is not moving with it, right? And we want that to stay all uniform. So let me undo that because I want it back to the same size. And let me put this back just so it looks nice. You're going to want to make sure to highlight these things and group them together. That way later, let's say I'm going to click on group over here. Let's say I want um, this same topper. I already designed it. I like it, but I want it for a smaller package. I can just move it all together, and everything sizes the same, right, at the same time. So now this is, like, roughly just over four inches wide and then, you know, a couple inches, an inch or so deep. Um, and then maybe I have a bigger package later, and I want a bigger thing, you know, whatever it is. So I just want to let you know you do want to definitely group things back um, into groups so that way when you manipulate them, they will all do the same thing like even this one I'm not sure if I grouped it so yeah let's group that so again now when I size it it's all sizing together right so okay uh, I'll be cutting no sooner did I show you how to do what I was trying to show you how to do that um, Cricut updated their uh, app or site this happens all the time I'm telling you so actually it had a ton of lists of what was going on I should have recorded it but one of them was that you can easily change the font now instead of going to the drop down looking for them and all this stuff it's there and so that's interesting already on the top here I see they changed my stuff this used to say my projects and then you know all these different things so I'm gonna click on my stuff because um, yeah so interesting enough your projects are already here so projects I guess images is just the things you own. I have no idea what's on there. Well, I guess we can look at it really quick. Is this where you'll keep your bookmark images? Okay, well, I didn't bookmark any of them or uploaded. I guess, oh, these are the ones I've uploaded from like um, European uh, magazines. Purchased. That's interesting. That's going to, I mean, if that's for real, I mean, that's going to be thousands, if not more. <laughs> And then all, I don't know. But anyway, let's go back to projects. And this is the project I was working on. I just wanted to show you that they've already updated some things. Let me see what this looks like. Let's say customize again, just so I can open this up. I had to go help my daughter's school, so I didn't cut yet. Um, and then when I come back to cut, everything's, not everything's different, but some things are different. Let's see. Let's see. Um, okay, so those are my words. That's my text box. Let me right click. No, I just says cut, copy, paste. Okay. Um... Hold on, let me see if I'm holding the right thing. There's my text box. Uh, edit text, is there? I don't think that's that much different. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong because of, uh, you know, I grouped it in other things. But I just want to let you know, things are a little bit different now, uh, supposedly. So uh, let me see if I click edit text box. Okay. Hmm. I still don't really see what they're talking about, but that's okay. Anyway, I just want to show you that they did change some things up. I'm going to go cut, and I'll be right back. Okay, so, um, yeah, while I'm here, I just want to show you. Again, I didn't mess with the score line to, like, stop here and then start again here. I didn't care. But if you want to just make your score line small enough to be in those little areas, of course, you can definitely do that. I just went straight across, and, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, but, yeah, so I'll keep cutting. That's a big boy. 
I'll be back. Things come along. I'll just glue them down because that's just easier for me as I'm working. But um, just want to show you, of course, if you're doing several, you know, enough for a classroom or something or whatever it is. Uh, lots of goodie bags or stocking stuffers. You would cut more than just one at a time. But I have this little guy, and so I'm just going to put my letters on. Okay. This is already much cuter. I like the um, outline shape. Again, we could have made this outline shape smaller. It's just that the way these were so high compared to this, it, you know, I had to make them bigger so that they would meet at least. The other thing is this font's weird. Like, why are the E's so high up when the P's are here? And I didn't mess with that because it's just, you know, they're just an odd font. Anyway, I'm cutting the little white. Uh, I'm going to go with white accents for the tag and the little bow part. So I'll just stick those down. I had to put glue on the back of my hand because this is very delicate. So I just kind of tapped it on there. Um, and then I'll do the ruffles. So, so I'll be right back. hearing the score lines. That's what you're hearing now. Do, do. <laughs> now it's going to cut. Well, yep. now it's going to cut. Oh, it's finishing up some score lines. But see how the rhythm is kind of different? Anyway, okay. I'll keep working. So let's have a little sit down here. I've been standing up this whole time. Um, and you can see the little score lines kind of went past my paper. Hopefully you can see that. I put them both on the same color paper. That way I can just get these going. This is a little thicker than I like. I told you I did one and a half. I kind of like one inch strips, one and a quarter, you know, so I'll probably resize that. Um, but these, you know, are generally one and a half inch. It just looks really big on here. And I always forget, I have one that I made and I would love the way this one came out. And as you can see, there's ups and downs, but look how wide these score lines are apart from each other, or like this one. And so they're not super similar. I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. But again, some I've been forward, some I've been backwards. This one's actually meant to look like this way. So these guys came forward and one went backwards. Hope you can kind of see that. So we'll see. And if I have to make adjustments, I will. So the whole point of this, you guys, is that the score marks are there and we're not just folding it by hand. And maybe it comes out cute, maybe it doesn't, you know. So hopefully once we get one that we like, keep that one and keep using that one. With these guys, all we're doing, it already has score lines. We're just gonna fold it over. And I will give it a quick score. <laughs> of course I say that, I don't see where our bone folder is, but there we go. And that's a really big bag topper. I mean, this guy is two, four, almost uh, like five and a half inches wide. So if you had a little bag, you can put that on there or a pack of stickers or whatever. So I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm just choosing words for that. This little guy, again, the score line's already there. Let the machine do the work. This paper I knew was going to crack because it's like a white core shimmery green paper. So it cracked a little bit. I mean, just the slightest amount. But there's another little cute topper with little gifts. Again, this could be literally anything, right? Anything you have in your repertoire there. All right, this guy. So I don't know if you can see the score lines. Hopefully you can see them right there and right there. So I'm going to score this one towards me and then back away from me. Okay. And then this one, the next one, back away from me and then back up to me. I'm liking it already. I probably would have gotten these closer, like a little bit wider so I can bring it more this way, but that's not bad. And then the next one, I mean, if you want to bring it up towards you, that's great. And these samples, see all these three are up towards me, right? Like what I'm saying is they come out. And this one, I have two coming up towards me. This one is forward, that one's pushed back, and this one's forward if you like that look. So I kind of want to see what that looks like. So let's do that one going back. So I think it would be like this. So this time away from me instead of towards me. Yeah, there you go. And that keeps it towards the back. And then again, you're gonna switch that back. So where did that one go? Yeah, like this. And I'm just using the score lines that are there, guys. This is actually really fun. Oh my gosh. Okay, now this guy towards me and then away because that'll bring it to the front and then away and then towards me. You're just doing opposite what you just did. There's a score line. Oh my gosh, you guys. I totally just eyeballed that and oh my goodness if that didn't will come out like exactly what I would want. Now this paper's cracking on me. This is brand new Crafters Companion paper, by the way. Literally just ordered it. Um, but look at that. <laughs> Yay! You know what? Actually, let's go with it. Let's go with it, guys. It wants to be that way. Let's make it a little shabby, a little fun. I'm just gonna 
do that. You can emboss these, of course, and then go and do whatever you want to do. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I eyeballed that. But just knowing kind of how to make paper ruffles is kind of why I was like, well, it should be here and it should be there, you know, as far as the lines. What I can do, that's the only problem is that not everybody has that scalloped, this guy. But I'll make a file that's just this guy and, and that's it. And then what you can do is, if you have things in your Cricut repertoire, like I said, in your stash that would work for you, just manipulate your image. The image I'm giving you guys for free, obviously. I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm going to charge for these things. But uh, I'll have it linked in the description box. And then you guys can just, you know, take the little cutting file and uh, uh, Cricut click customize it instead of make it otherwise you can just make it right that's fine you're gonna click customize it and then like I showed you highlight the ribbon itself move it away and then uh, highlight your your little um, score lines and then superimpose them on another shape that you like right and you already have the score lines it's just your paper has to be about 11 11 and a half inches uh, long so you can just glue this and you have a paper ruffle or we're gonna sew it so we're gonna sew it and on this one we'll do them all coming up forward how about that so um, yeah so uh, again we're kind of like fold this up towards you and then away and then you do the opposite, so it's away and then towards you. And I've never done this with like a scallop shape, I don't think, so let's see what happens. And then this one again, towards me and then away, because now they're all gonna come up towards me. This is very different, just because of that scallop edge. And then away from me and towards me, you're just doing it opposite so that you get it going. And then towards me and away. That one's a little different. And then away and toward me so funny oh my gosh so again how you lay these down like do you like them both there you want this one up front maybe this one goes on top of this one that one on top of that one or maybe that one just gets buried do you know what i'm saying as far as arranging your your little bits so i'm gonna really bone fold this so it does have a very different look when they're all coming up towards you like this one i really like the way this one came out this one again has some up and then that middle one facing back and these are all facing me now, too bad about this paper, like totally, look at this paper. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's not great. Ugh. Anyway, I did not expect that to be honest. It's very crunchy paper, very weird. Um, but we'll go ahead and sew them. Let's see what it looks like from the back. See, and this is interesting. These are all going away. It just has a different look. It looks nicer as far as the edges though. So, hmm, I wonder if I should just do it this way. I don't want to. What does this one look like if we go back? That's crazy. Okay, it has to go like this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna rough these up too, just so it doesn't look as bad, and then I'm gonna bring my uh, sewing machine out. It's impossible to see, but basically I just take this and I hold it like this, and I just sew down that center. So I'm gonna put this here, and of course you're watching out for the ruffles because they're gonna want to not so much come apart, but they're, you know, they're bumpy. So um, I always like to bring down my needle first, and then I just start going. And it can be all fun and who cares, you know, whimsical. I do try to make it straight, but you know. Okay, uh, let's see how that worked out. Very good. I do want to say I've been using this uh, sewing machine for a while and I was like, oh, it's not really staying, you know, the way I want it to. It was, um, it had to come apart up here, like in the stringing, you know, how you have to kind of like go around and under and all these things. Then one of them had come out. So that's why the tension was like not great, but it's back to good. So there that is. I'll do the other one same way and we can kind of look at them and see. I like this one better, to be honest, going back than the other ones up front. Actually, I guess I could do this, still do that here, couldn't I? I just like the look of the other one better, you know? It does look different though with the scallops, so I guess we'll just keep it the way it was, but um, I do like the look with the flat sides, straight sides, like this one. Okay, I'll be right back. I was like, I like sewing these straight, you know, as much as I could, and this one was like wacky, so I just went back and forth a few times that the, was a funner look to make it look more like just crazy, because as you can see, it kind of wanted to go up around like that, but yeah. 
Okay, let's take a moment to evaluate these. The other thing is I usually crunch them enough so that they're about five and a half inches wide so I can put it like on a A2 size card or, you know, bigger. And uh, let's check that out. So one, two, three, four, five, and <laughs> just exactly like five and a half. Isn't that crazy? So um, if you want yours a little tighter, then you can just manipulate your these guys to be a little bit larger, you know what I'm saying, because it'll bring it in more. But I really like the way this ended up, so I'm super happy with this one. This one's a little bit different, you know. Um, and this one, one, two, three, four, five, I was gonna say it should be about the same. This one feels a little bit longer, though, for some reason, so. Oh, you know what, didn't I make this paper longer? Didn't I do 11 and then like 11 and a half or whatever I did? I don't remember. Either way, there they are. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, so, you know, just having fun making a few different um, things. Like I said, I might shorten this one up just so that it's right at five and a half instead of maybe you bend it a little bit different and it sticks out, you know, too much or whatever. But um, I will isolate the one by itself and I'll probably call it like basic paper ruffle and you guys can have it. I'll have it linked in the description box. Then we have these little cuties. Um, yeah, so just some fun things you can do, you know, for your loaded pockets, for your little gifts, for your stocking stuffers, whatever it is that you need something like this for, for, um, now I'm thinking if this is flat enough, I might add it to my loaded pocket in the front because I always still want to use a balloon animal. And then I remember I have a couple balloon animals. I think the ones from Diamond Press is stamp and cup kind of thing. But I have the Spellbinders one that's like um, embossed, right? So when you roll it through. So if I put a little balloon animal, I think that'd be cute. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.